A night these Kirkcaldy youngsters will recall for the rest of their lives. The night Wraith Robos were honoured for bringing home the first major trophy in their 111 year history. The Coca-Cola Cup of 1994, the Scottish League Cup, will be remembered as a triumph for sporting romance. Justification for all those who believe in fairy tales. A story which will survive indefinitely in Scottish sporting folklore. Yes, there was dancing in the streets. We've managed to do this ourselves. With the help of the players who have, who have come through it over the last three, four years, know what we want to try and achieve and what we're all looking for. It's more of a personal satisfaction, this, you know. Nobody can put anybody's name to it. Only it's all their own work, you know. Players and management staff, everybody. Wraith Robbers Football Club, founded in 1883. Starks Park has a capacity of 9,200. They lost 2-0 to Rangers in the Scottish League Cup of 1949, their only previous major final. Northern Ireland international Jimmy Nicholl became player manager in 1990. Well, I think at the start of the season, because we got relegated and some of the performances we put in last year and some of the results we got, although we didn't get enough results to survive, but the expectancy then from our supporters was we weren't producing the form that they thought we were capable of producing. And with some disappointing league results at the start of the season, there was no doubt. And it was only our cup games were keeping us going. But then even after our cup games during the week, we never produced anything. The Saturday after playing midweek in the cup, we never got a result. And it was as if the players were getting themselves wound up for the cup and then coming, coming into league form and not producing it. And I couldn't put my finger on the reason why. Now, if they had their minds on the cup and probably thinking, well, I think we can go a long way here. Then fair play to them because they proved it in the end, you know, but it wasn't exactly the, the way I wanted them to go about it. The road to cup glory began in Dingwall. A second half hat-trick from Ali Graham and goals from Colin Cameron and Gordon Diel overwhelmed Ross County. Colin Cameron was the hat-trick man in the 3-2 win against Premier Division Kilmarnock in the next round. There wasn't any reason for me to think, hey, our name's on this cup, you know, there wasn't anything that... If you score a couple of own, if somebody gets a, an own goal or you've been awarded a penalty kick in the 90th minute, you win 1 0, things like that, or they get a man sent off. And, and there's wee indications where you turn out, hey, our name's in this cup. Because that's been two rounds now that that wee bit of luck's been going for it. But we never had that. You know, and everybody turns around and says that your name was on it. But it wasn't in a lucky sense for me. The quarter final opponents were St Johnston at McDermott Park. Colin Cameron's cross set up Sean Dennis for the opener in 20 minutes. Scenes of celebration which were a warm-up for the good times ahead. Player manager Jimmy Nicholl was at his influential best in midfield. He was backed up superbly by the little creators Colin Cameron and Danny Lennon. On the half hour they combined and the deflection helped Cameron get in behind the Saints defence. His cross was thumped home by Ali Graham for goal number two. It was Graham's fifth goal of the season and the first which wasn't a header, but there were more to come. St Johnston remained a threat. Stephen McInespy owed a debt to Scott Thompson in goal when George O'Boyle seized on his short pass back. A great reflex save. Early in the second half, St Johnston's persistence paid off. Turner and O'Boyle started it all. Peter Davenport took advantage of Colin Miller's support on the left. And the fullback tested race defence with a cross which they couldn't clear. John O'Neill brought Saints right back into the match. The next goal was clearly crucial and Colin Cameron was denied by a marvellous save from Andy Rhodes. The little midfield player was becoming more and more significant to the Wraith Rovers' cause. 
At this stage, St Johnston were in full cry in search of an equaliser. Wraith rode their luck when slack defending allowed Peter Davenport to crack this one against the bar. But the miss of the match was by Ali Graham. Stevie Crawford's run and cross and the big striker headed wide from point-blank range. His feelings were clear. It was evidence, though, of Rovers' prowess on the break and menace up front. More substandard defending and St Johnston's luck was out again. Kevin McGowan's header coming back off the upright. Rovers' travelling supporters were put out of their misery, though, seven minutes from time. Another deadly counter-attack sparked off by Danny Lennon. And when Colin Cameron's return pass was released, there was no question of offside. Lennon scored expertly to take Ray through to their first semi-final in 31 years against Airdrie, back at McDermott Park. Airdrie, with a form team of the four. You know? So people turn around and say, well, you want the Erdry. Erdry wanted us, we wanted Erdry. Celtic and Aberdeen wanted us or Erdry, we know that. But I never thought about it. Now, hold on, all right, we want, we want a wee chance to get the final. But Erdry was the forum team at the time. So we knew how hard it was going to be. I'm just hoping on the night that they produced what they produced in the earlier stages of the cup, you know? So, Ray Throbos start the all First Division in Coca-Cola Cup semi-final. And make no mistake, both these sides deserve to be here. Every starting winning on penalty kicks against Morton at Capolo and then beating the side third top of the Premier Division, Motherwell, at Fir Park. And then the side second top, Hibs, at Easter Road. Ray Throbos, on the other hand, had an easy 5-0 win against Ross County, then beat Kilmarnock 3-2 at home and came here to McDermott Park to beat St Johnston by three goals to one. Careless one, finds Lennon in midfield. Off goes Graham. Very powerful indeed, down he goes. And the free kick is given, Paul Jack, the culprit. Totally uncompromising defender, an excellent marker. A little bit overzealous with this one. Losing out to Graham. Couldn't match the strength of the big striker and pulled him down. So these early stages, tense and nervous. Both sides trying desperately to settle to their natural game. Ruddell sends it in. Too high there for Dennis. And then again is McInespy outside him. Good play by the young fullback. There's Lennon. That's a good cross. And an excellent early chance there for Ray Throbos. The chance fell to Gordon Yell. And he was almost on that, just too much in stretch to direct it goalwards. Ruddles cross, challenged by DL. Now Kirkwood getting some treatment from the Airdrie fans, having played for the club for years and there's going to be a booking here for Graham Hay for persistent fouling. Another card for Hay for this challenge into the back of Harry Graham. Well, bang in keeping with the FIFA directives that attacker from behind. Kirkwood hovering to the right. This danger is recognised though by Alan Lawrence who's come back. SP shot was a good one. An excellent free kick from Ray Glovers from the training ground it came. Very effective indeed. Colin Cameron, a little bit of play acting there. Laying it off to McInespy. And the shot was well taken by Martin. And Stewart. Supported well by Boyle. Who abandons his marking duties when Airdrie have possession. Stewart has found space, a shooting chance on the volley. Good effort by Sandy Stewart, that troubled the keeper. Well, this one 
was dipping and swerving. It was very difficult for Scott Thompson. He'll be happy to have stopped that. Lennon picks up the loose ball in midfield. Cameron now moving over to the left. Bringing Sanderson with him this time. Neary striding forward on the end of this, a chance for David Neary. Surviving a field of handball there, he's still in the thick of it all. And the chance is taken! Brilliantly in the end, Ali Graham makes it 1 0 to Wayne Globus. But the credit goes to David Neary for his inclusion into the midfield, into the attack there. Some very determined work again by Neary. Then out, Gordon Yell, set it all up for Ali Graham, and that's a deadly finish. So a major task for Adrian in the second half, Ray Rovers with the tails up, and after finishing the first half very strongly indeed. Adrian looked at one point early in the match as though they were taking control, but Ray Rovers hit back, and the lively front three, Cameron's mobility, Graham's aerial power and good touch on the ground, DL's instincts around the goal, they've all been very tough for Adrian to contain, and they do have that well-drilled defensive system, but it's been pierced once, this is Boyle. Trying to exploit the pace of Lawrence, a oh, great judgment shown now. Well, now the linesman has flagged that that was outside the box. Thompson can't believe it. Now he's got to be in trouble for that. It's deliberate handball outside the penalty area. Now he could be ordered off for this. But he clearly believed he was all right. You see him starting to go back, and it is a red card. Now that is a very accurate interpretation of the rules. I thought the final was all right, yeah. And then uh, I looked down. And I still thought it was all right, and then I glanced at the linesman, and he was flagging, and I thought, well, oh, here we go, you know, but just one of these things at the time. First of all, enough in my career, and I was, I was more frustrated than anything else, because I really thought I'd maybe blown it for the boys, you know. It's such an important game, semi-final, and uh, I honestly thought at the time that was the chance gone. And what a moment this is for 17-year-old Brian Potter. And taking off Davy Kirkwood. This is perfectly permissible, off goes Kirkwood. Scott Thompson can't believe that, wishing his young substitute well. The head hanging as he comes off, he's very unfortunate. And Brian Potter goes on for what will be a very tough 20 minutes before the end. Well, oh, referee Bill Crombie left really with no option when the linesman signalled that that was outside the area. So the first thing Potter has to do is cope with this free kick. Well, every great throwers player facing the ball. Kenny Black may take this. Jimmy Sanderson having a chat with him there, but Black has immense power in his left foot. There's Black. And it's deflected just wide of goal. Kenny Black can't believe that, it must have been inches wide. Well, a vital deflection there. So a corner kick now to Airdrie, there's Lawrence. And a wasted ball into the side netting. Well, that's welcome respite for Ray Drovers in defence. Alan Lawrence would not be happy about that. It's all becoming heated out there, as you might expect in a semi-final. Ali Graham thinks an injustice was done there. As is Sanderson. He can now spring from the back. Ray throw over the man short. Here they must make the passes count. Cooper. He's made it! And no goalkeeper would have had a chance with that one. Ryan Potter dejected, but it certainly wasn't his fault. Without the space afforded here to Steve Cooper, and he struck this so sweetly right into the corner. No more goals in the 90 minutes, and despite an aerial bombardment of young Brian Potter in goal, 
Wraith survived the extra time thanks to 10 hard-working committed men. The fans from Kirkcaldy showed their appreciation with some great vocal support as Jimmy Nicholl and Martin Harvey prepared their men to face the penalty ordeal ahead. Jimmy Nicholl selecting the players for the penalty shootout, put out looking for volunteers. Who's fifth, he says. He's got four of them, needs another. John Martin taking his position in front of his supporters. First one, so important. Here comes Sean Dennis. Confidence all the way from Dennis, sending Martin the wrong way. Wow, penalty kick here for Airdrie. Jimmy Boyle is first. Well, no argument. Long run up from Mike and SP. Well, he enjoyed that all right. The relief is obvious. There was tension before the shot. Crisply struck straight to the middle of the goal. And now Andy Smith for Airdrie. Can young Potter make a save? And once again, just missed the keeper with that. But it's Colin Cameron with the third kick for Rayfields. Here's Cameron. Well, he made that look so easy. Very fine young player, this. He clearly is mightily relieved as he sends Martin the wrong way. And now, Paul Jack. Tucked that into the corner, the goalkeeper guessed right. But it's three apiece, and now Steve Coppert. Just though these players have been practicing penalties for a long time. Calm smile. He knew all the time he'd score. That's the message he's conveying. This time it's Kenny Black for Airdrie. Well, seldom have I seen so many effective penalties. So Danny Lennon with the fifth for Ray Rovers. No mistake. And now it's effectively into sudden death here. That's very well taken by Lennon. And it's Alan Lawrence who'll take this one. Taking a number of penalties in his career. He claims some expertise. He has to score, it's as simple as that. And Potter has saved it! Ray Thorburn in the final, and 17-year-old Brian Potter has taken them there. What an incredible fairy tale for Potter. It was a magnificent save. The final ahead, minus the skipper Danny Lennon, ruled out cruelly by injury. Potter's moment of glory was over, and there was more hard work to be done.
don't like the idea of um, doing a few kicks and corners and set pieces and all. And players start thinking on the Friday before cuff in on Sunday. I'm not in this. I mean, no, I'm not involved here. And you've lost them then. So the preparation that side wasn't ideal, not the way I wanted it. But again, I didn't want to disappoint anybody too early. So every thing we went about our game on Sunday was only, they only told the core to one on Sunday afternoon. I think that's the best way for them. Other than that, you fill their head full of wee motors and confuse them. And God, I don't know what he wants here, you know. Maybe it's just as well doing about it. The final, November 27, Ibrox, and pre-match moments to recall for the new skipper, Gordon Diel. I can remember we were standing in the tunnel, and all the Celtic boys, they were all shouting and screaming, and their boys were dead quiet. And I think the nerves got the better, because Big Ali Graham then turned to me and asked Andy Walker, are you nervous, Andy? And Andy Walker turned to me and says, aye, well, I'm nervous. And Big Ali turned to me and says, well, I'm no. You know, so it was the pure nerves, the shouting that was coming for Celtic, to us, and then walking on the pitch, it's unbelievable. I've played here in all foreign games, and I've never experienced a, an atmosphere like I experienced on Sunday. The Celtic get the Coca-Cola Cup final underway, and we already have established that both sides defending in a super system. David Neri at the back for Ray Rovers. So the early stages, crucial for both sides. Celtic in particular anxious to stamp their authority in the match. And for Ray Rovers, it's more a case of trying to settle into this big occasion. And Cameron hard in the midfield. James first contribution, there's Tom Boyd. Brian O'Neill at the back there for Celtic. On the far side is Mike Galloway. Only starting wide on the right there. That's a very good play in the middle of the field there. Steve the Crawford going for a run. And brought down there at the edge of the area by Tony Mowbray. The referee goes across now. His view of that is very interesting because he could really have caused a problem there for Tony Mowbray, Stevie Crawford's pace, causing all the problems here. Well, there's no lack of confidence about that run in actual fact, and uh, maybe Tony Mowbray can count himself lucky not to have his name in the book, but uh, an interesting and a confidence start for Wraith Rovers. And they sent Sean Dennis up for this set piece, and with Ali Graham, he provides a very big threat. Good shot there from Cameron. And despite the big men being up, Ray Throber showing their ability and a variation of play with that short free kick for Cameron, shot at goal. It's a nice variation on the free kick and it's a confidence start for Ray Throber. I don't think Gord Marshall was ever in any trouble. No sign of any inferiority complex in these Ray Throber ranks in the early stages. And no sign either, here to make up the numbers. Thompson's clearance. That's the L. Left that to Crawford, allowing Galloway to step in. Now we have Collins for Celtic. Next day's head up. And he'll very accurate there, finding Mike Galloway. Well, the sides depending on their pullbacks to give them width. Tom Boyd coming back here to collect and hold off McInnesby. It's a good hustling play by a young McInnesby. Cameron was tackled there swiftly by Paul McStay, but Ray Throvers enjoying some very good early possession. Cameron very much involved in the play. Here's DL. Cross it comes to Crawford. Well read by Mowbray. The counter attack now on for Celtic. Led by McStay. Walker to the left. The tackle came from Crawford. It's a free kick to Celtic. Surging play there from Paul McStay. Highly motivated. It's a good surging run, but I think perhaps he just overran it just a little bit. He allowed the challenge to come in there. 
And I think it may well have been better had he laid a pass off to one of his followers who had, who had broken in front of him. Now, perhaps a shade too far out, although John Collins and Charlie Nicholas are experts from these free kicks. Very well held by Thompson. A kind of confident catch to give a lot of confidence to his defenders. Well, John Collins hits a, a good free kick, but really all I think that achieves is really building up the confidence in the goalkeeper. He's, he'll be happy he's had a touch as early as this in the game. Well, there's Cameron. Oh, that's good running. Chance on here for Ray Roberts. Superb effort by Cameron. He brought the current stand to life. The Ray Roberts supporters responding magnificently to this. He's got tremendous confidence in his ability and he's not all that far off the target and obviously that's the type of thing that Celtic will have to watch out for because he's good at breaking from that deep midfield role and get beyond it, the opposing defenders. Well, Tommy Barnes before the match insisted there was no possibility of Celtic underestimating their opponents and it's just as well because it's turning out to be a splendid final. This man's made such a telling contribution already. Cameron looking for the return pass. There's Dare. And very good cover provided by Tom Boyd. Jason Dare, a glimpse of goal there until Boyd arrived. Yeah, once again, the instigators, young Colin Cameron, he's, he's playing against Charlie Nicholas, but when he gets the ball, Wraith gets in possession, he's prepared to break away from him. First corner of the right throwers. Here's Crawford, a chance, it's the only goal for Ray Throwers! Stevie Crawford! And the Ray Throwers fans go wild, it's been a magnificent start to the match from Ray Throwers, capped by that goal from Stevie Crawford. A mix up, no Celtic defender gets in a positive tackle, but that's not to take it away from young Stevie Crawford because he kept his head, knew what he wanted. Oh, and he hits a smacker right in the bottom end of the net. This is really going to live, not this game now. Well, Steve Crawford, sixth goal of the season. Here's Tom Boy trying to respond quickly for Celtic. That's Collins. Out of luck there, slipping in the kind of bear across. Well, the goal coming after 19 minutes. And from a neutral point of view, the kind of opening of the match I think a lot of people are hoping for because Celtic now have a mountain to climb. Paul McStay battling hard in the middle of the field, leading by example. Graham's layoff, that was Cameron forced to hurry by Donnelly. By Galloway. Well, another player going down on this high rock surface. A number of players have found occasional difficulties with that. Shepard will have one or two slips again in this match this afternoon. The pitch does look in good order after that match on Friday evening in the league. Rangers against Aberdeen. That's mixed day. That's for Boyd. A great pass. McInnesby's quick though. It's a great chance now for Celtic. Blocked there by Dennis. The shot from Charlie Nicholas who thought the hand was used by Dennis. Referee McCluskey not interested. It's a real opportunity because of Tommy Boyd's positions down that left-hand side, but uh, there was a chance to get a shot in target, but you've got to compliment the defenders because they got to the, to the ball when it was on and blocked it. In goes McNally, did well there. That's a good play from Celtic. Vintage McStay. Here's Boyd. Chance to run at McInnesby. It's off the post from Tom Boyd. Well, Ray Throwers for the moment riding the luck. Here's Boyd again. Showing his amazing stamina and running power already, Boyd. Another chance on this time must be the See 
this coming up, and once again, it's Galloway's courageous enough to get in the middle. Good, sensible header, and there's Andy Walker in a position where all strikers, good strikers, should be. But to here we see once again Tommy Boyd right in the midst of all this. Good swinging ball right into the middle there, and there's Andy Walker to dispatch it. But good adventures played by Celtic, and really you can see that goal coming over the last four or five minutes. Celtic looking for a second goal. The header away was by Dennis. It will be returned quickly by McNally. That was deflected by DL, but safely in the arms of Scott Thompson. Well, it's been a rousing first half with Wraith Rovers deserving immense credit for the way in which they picked up the game at the start. And referee Jim McCluskey brings that excellent spell of entertainment to a close. Ray Rovers will start the match. Gordon DL, the captain, and Ali Graham. And we're off once again. And the great certainty about this competition is that there has to be a winner today. And that means that whatever happens, there may well be extra time, there may be a penalty shootout before the end, but we're watching an event which is certain to produce drama before the end. We've had plenty of that in the first half. There's Simon Donnelly, who's played well in the first half. Picked up now by Walker. Now John Collins demonstrating his confidence with that very ambitious effort. Celtic's leading goal scorer this season with six, quite apart from his international scoring contributions. Yeah, I was a bit surprised at Ray's start to the second half, uh, Jock, and actually, but they started off very careless and lazy. They had the kick off and all of a sudden they gave the ball away to Celtic. That's the last thing you want to do at the start of a second half. It's going to be really full of death to the ball. Charlie Nicholas. And linking well again with Andy Walker. This is a formation which could well bear fruit for Celtic. Yeah, you see that area that just behind the front two. Nicholas is prepared to break into that. He's prepared to have a shot in. You know what? It all goes well for Celtic, but obviously that must be of concern to Red Rover because they can't afford to give him that type of space. Galloway's in space. Good running here by Walker. Cross goes Broadle, it's a great ball in! And it's gone wide of the target from Tom Boyd. Well, it's two and a half years since he scored for Celtic, and this must be the closest yet. It was a great pass from Mike Gallagher, and it's superb cross by Andy Walker, and really Tom Boyd must be wondering how he's missed that one. There was, there's the pass, look at that, look at the space that Andy Walker's got, and I think this is a problem that they're going to have. And there, there in goes the cross, and really Tommy Boyd should be finishing that one. Good play by Collins, that's O'Neill. Still Boyd pushing forward, and a left winger virtually. One for Galloway again, he's won it well. Arrived up quickly at Andy Walker. Collins showing skill and strength. Now Donnelly. Belton wide for Galloway. Brave goalkeeping by Thompson. Well, the keeper did extremely well there. Yeah, he does. He, he's kept his eye on the ball. He's prepared to go in there and get, get a knock, but. Uh, all credit to him, he, he wanted that ball and he, he achieved it, but really, race difficulties, David Sinclair seems to be lost in that midfield there, all of a sudden, Charlie Nicholas, who didn't really have all that much to do in the game, was almost controlling it. And he walked and tried it out there very rapidly by Stephen McInespe, that was excellent defending by McInespe. Well, he saved the river right over without question, Walker was in the clear. Says Collins, chance to hit the byline, he's away from Sinclair. Still in possession. And the first time shot came from Charlie Nicholas under severe pressure there from Dennis. An excellent play from John Collins. Yeah, it, cer it certainly is. And there's, there's the opportunity that uh, Charlie Nicholas misses, but in fairness, he was put under pressure by the defence. 
But here we see the beginning. We'll look at that one. He presses himself between two defenders. Just a little bit lazy by by Jason Deer there, in actual fact, because he allowed him to run and break in, in between. Now the pace of Copper being used on the left by Ray Roberts. Crunching tackle delivered by Galloway. Trying to get forward at every opportunity at the three quarter mark in the match. Still one goal apiece. Stevie Crawford spoke that, cancelled out by Andy Walker. Goddard's corner. Marshall did well. With a very early decision to come for that. Yeah, he makes up his mind right away. This is my ball. He goes for it. It's in amongst all those big fillers, but guess his hands it and holds on to it. It's always important for a defence to see the goalkeeper doing that. The layoff came from Crawford. Jason Dare has switched to the Ray Crawford's right flank. Crawford's come to the left. Here's Walker with Ruddle. Galloway with Crawford, who did well marking him and matching the run. This is Cameron. Yes, he was nudged by Collins. The referee's quite right, given the free kick. He really drives at players when he when he picks up that ball, Colin Cameron. Really, if, if, if uh, Wraith could get more of the ball, I think he would be able to cause any team problems at the back. But, you know, the, the fact that they're under so much pressure, it means he's working hard to get the ball to prevent things rather than to be creative. There he's hit up, straight to Brunel, Diel, and a stumble there by Diel. Nicholas playing it along, there's no offside, here's Donnelly, a chance to give Celtic the lead. And a chance which he spawns, a lack of conviction there by young Simon Donnelly, who hasn't scored this season. Well, the linesman right on the spot, way play on there. Yeah. For me, it looks suspiciously offside, but uh, really, his first touch lets him down, and indeed his second one takes it towards the goalkeeper. But all credit to the goalkeeper, he's prepared to go out there and block it and smile it and save his team once again. Well, it was a great chance, though, for Celtic. And one they might regret. And here's Gordon Yell trying to do just that, and a very good finisher. Well, deadly in that position, frequently Gordon Yell. Scored ten times for his club this season. Well, that's right, that's it. Uh, it's a funny old game at times, as you're saying. We've not seen a lot of Gordon Deal, but I think this is where Celtic have got to watch at the back. The concentration's got to be good because he's capable of scoring and he's got good pace. He'll get himself in behind there. Nicholas to Galloway. Here's O'Neill. Boyd makes an angle on the far side. Donnelly's going to cross to that side also. Stay. Has to be careful here. He's in trouble. This is DL. Interception is made by O'Neill. Graham was breaking on the right. Paul McStay discussing the problem with his teammates there. He didn't have anyone at the right angle to play a pass to. This is Collins. It goes for Nicholas. That's Walker! Nicholas. Four minutes remaining. Can Ray Thomas draw on there? A 
amazing reserves of courage and stamina and saved this. All by next day. Really is a magnificent turn and shot by Leandy Wolf, but definitely actually see, you see Nicholas in ahead of the defenders. Defenders just a little bit lead footed, but maybe a bit of tiredness, but uh, Nicholas is in there in front of them to put shelter in the head. So, Ray Thomas of the free kick. David Neri fights the ball in. One inside the area by O'Neill. That's Sinclair. Everything happened in slow motion. You know, young Jason Gordon, never seen out in the right wing, he's cut in and he's hit across and all of a sudden I found myself, the ball's just bounced up to me and the header was there and it was, it was a dream come true, it was unbelievable, what a feeling. Jimmy Nicol senses this tie of this final is well within his grasp suddenly. Encouragement for his players. The sell for extra time, I'm sure of that. Helped on by Cameron. And the final whistle goes, we're into extra time. It's been an amazing second half. So, extra time to come. And motivation from Skipper DL. Crucial, inspiring words from Jimmy Nicholl. He checks with the linesman, and extra time is underway. Interesting to see very quickly if Wraith Rovers are staying with the formation with which they end the game, and they are. 442 formation. The L beaten to that by O'Neill. That's Sinclair. Well, Mike and Espy. Then it comes to Sinclair. And Ray Clover certainly starting much more briskly in extra time than they did at the start of the second half. Enjoying a lot of possession here. That's Dennis Cameron. It's well read by Paul McStay, though. He wins that from Crawford. Trying to release Andy Walker. The marker is nearly. report that Celtic were sure to do well against the first division side finding that to be very much off the mark that's good defending again facing Collins now it's Cameron Gordon Yell peels off to the right Graham is through the middle Cameron stays up Crawford joining them also here's Crawford shooting chance on and very well hit by Crawford Gordon Marshall took up very good position for that Interception by Boyd. Here's Crawford. Strong, a loser running. Here's Sinclair now, the shooting chance. Steady himself. Oh, wanting to walk right in, I think. Good effort though by Cameron. Well, Ray Thrubbers really believe they can win this. Yeah, they're not giving up, have they at all? Look at this, when this ball breaks free in the edge of the box, there's Gonnacan once again. It's a good shot in. 105 minutes gone and still 15 minutes left and the dreams of the Wraith Rovers supporters remain alive. So the last period for the match to be won without necessity for penalty kicks. Quarter hour to go. Boyd played it inside, lots of space here for Paul McStay. Needs some help again from Boyd. Paul then did well, but again, no one supporting him in the middle. Dennis has time to clear. Awkward that for Graham. Here's Rowbottom. Graham again, leaving that to Crawford. 
He's a very dangerous player with lots of running power. This is Gordon Diel. Back it comes to McInespy. Cropper is still on the ground as this move continues. McInespy wants some help. He gets it inside from Sinclair. That's for Cameron. Well held up by McNally. It was very good defending by Mark McNally. Still Crawford on the ground here as McStay goes past him. Faulkner. Might be crap that Crawford's suffering from. The referee is holding the play anyway to ensure treatment for Crawford. Jimmy, Jimmy Nicholl entitled to be proud of his team. They, I'm sure, appreciate his contribution to their efforts. Celtic supporters remain defiant, though. Do they believe that the cup is still there to be won? Well, neither side, I'm sure, relishing the prospect of a penalty shootout. Ray Throvers have succeeded once already in the semi-final against Airdrie. Here's John Collins. Walker breaks wide. That's a good ball in. Uh, Thompson did well, full stretch, getting that ball at his height. So just five minutes remaining of extra time. Yeah, it's a good run and cross by Andy Walker, but look at the goalkeeper, once again he comes confidently to take that ball. Well, it's been a day to remember, regardless of the outcome for these Ray Rovers supporters. Inside the final minute, a little bit of stoppage time, perhaps. O'Neill just got a touch there. Here's McNally, forced to hurry. Turning up to safety. No one wants to be guilty of an error at this stage in the game. There would be no way back. So a throw to Celtic. Can they muster? Or either side, indeed, muster one final effort here win the match McInespy did well there's Sinclair ball will come Wraith Rovers again they've, they've had a very good extra time period Wraith Rovers Redford giving chase Marshall sorts it out for Celtic distance called for this time Woody Falk not a target losing out to Dennis but the ball is picked up here by Byrne Who's had a very good match for Ray Rovers. With an injury time and extra time. Penalties looming as Celtic come forward again. Is there to be a dramatic end? Charging run to the byline. And McInnesby forced to head that demand for the corner. Scarcely enough time for this to be taken. There was Galloway getting the byline, pulling that across extremely well. Surely the last opportunity of the match. Help from there to the side netting. It is a goal kick. Mike Galloway was the player with the target. He wants a corner, he's not going to get one. And I suspect that will be the last attempt on goal until the penalty shootout. Referee Jim McCluskey checking his watch. And there it goes, the final whistle. It's a penalty shootout. Well, who would have expected or believed that? Regardless of the outcome, these 11,000 Wraith Rovers supporters had already enjoyed a day to savour, a day to be proud of, and still there was the prospect of victory over the mighty Celtic. The penalty shootout would decide it. I couldn't see anybody walking away. Sometimes you see people walking away and just hiding behind bodies and... Big Sean Dennis straight away and first. E Mickey. Just now, Stevie Crawford, Steve McInnes. And they all just wait, well, just, it was just a case of turning around and saying, right, you're going, but Big Sean, I'm first. Because, like he said before, he didn't want to be. If he was going to miss, he didn't want to be. He said, I'll take one, but I'll be first. And then you're all right, second, third, fourth, fifth, where you go. I just sort of I just sort of said to myself, I've got a right good chance of making up for a semi final, you know, and I was just, I was really looking forward to going to. So it's Ray Rovers who will be first. 
foot they score, it gives them a great edge. There's no doubt about that. So it's Sean Dennis. He scored once this season. Gordon Diel, the normal penalty taker, and he cannot be involved because he's been replaced. The referee has instructions for the goalkeeper to stay on the line. So five penalty kicks aside to sort this out. and the accuracy beat him. Andy Walker, no stranger to penalties. He's done it. No chance at all for Thompson. Relief for Andy Walker. Stevie Crawford scored the opening goal. Beautifully struck with his right foot. Again, the goalkeeper quite close to that, but couldn't get his hand down quickly enough. Stevie Crawford indicating that his heart was beating rather quickly there. Now it's Paul Byrne for Celtic. substantial 6-5 to Celtic and it's the skipper Paul McStay will take the next for Celtic as that one goes flying past Gordon Marshall here's Paul McStay who played in the side which won in 1982 with Charlie Nicholas 
And Tommy Barnes, the manager. Unthinkable, surely, for the skipper to miss. I made up my mind which way to go and all the rest of it and thankfully enough when he hit it, you know sort of halfway through the air you're going to get a post it and fortunately enough I managed to get a hand on it and that was enough. I sort of pulled myself off the deck and my first glance was to the referee and I actually thought he was maybe going to make him take it again for, for some reason because his hands were starting to, to move up in the air and then I looked again and then it was as if he was just saying that was it all over and I just kept running after that, there was no stopping me. <laughs> Sunday was probably the highlight of my whole career. The fact he'd been captain, getting the goal with about five, four minutes, five or four minutes to go, and then just happened to walk up and pick up the first ever trophy in the club. Icing the cake for me, to quite honestly. And now we come to the presentation of our Team of the Year award. You may remember that last year Rangers took the honours, and with me to present the award is Ali McCoyce. Ali, would you like to reveal the contents of that envelope? Okay, here you go. And the winner of the Sports Team Team of the Year 1994 is Jimmy Nichols, Wraith Rovers. Come on up, boys. Well done, the old side. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Great job. Now don't drop that. No, I'm not going to. 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 It's laughable when you think about us in Europe because it's something you could never imagine happen. But the fact is, it's happening now, and we'll prepare for it whenever the time comes. But I'm, I'm sure it's going to be wherever we go, it's going to be a great turnout from the town. I know that. But when I talk about it, and people ask you, who do you want to play and who would you like? And I say, you know, it's so far away that you can't imagine. And we know we've got preliminary rounds, we could get, get anybody, we know that. But all I hope for is. Years down the line, and if two supporters are past each other in the road, I want them to turn around and say, remember that night, Wraith Rovers in Europe, remember that night we had Barcelona, or AC Milan, or Real Madrid, I want, I want them to remember the night, and I want them to remember who we played, not some team that they can't even pronounce, they can't even spell, that don't even know what country they're from, and who was it knocked us out in the first round, and who was that team that came to Starks Park? I don't want that. I want them to turn around and say, what a great night that was, under the lights, European night and to know who it was that we played that night because other than that there will be just be a waste.